Petit Institute was formed in 1995 to accelerate Georgia Tech's move into the biotechnology area. At the time, we were across campus in uh, older buildings that were not designed for wet lab biological research whatsoever. Uh, we really had no mechanism for uh, engineers and scientists to work together. So it was Bob Neerham's vision really that uh, initiated the institute, which initially was a, a virtual institute, to bring together people to just to start talking. The genesis of the Petit Institute goes back to 1987, when a new president, Pat Cresine, arrived at Georgia Tech. Shortly after he arrived, Cresine formed a task force on the life sciences. In 1992, Shelley May and Bob Neerham became the co-chairs of the task force. In 1993, we put forward a recommendation to Pat Cresign to create an institute that would bring together people in the sciences, people in engineering, working in the field of the life sciences. In 1994, Bob Neerham was named director of the newly formed Interdisciplinary Institute for Bioengineering and Bioscience. That same year, Wayne Clough became Georgia Tech's new president. The future of the new institute was suddenly uncertain. We all worried about, well, what's the new president going to do with this recommendation for an interdisciplinary institute? He simply upped the ante in terms of the commitment of the upper administration to the Petit Institute. At the time, it was simply called the Institute for Bioengineering and Bioscience. Bob's vision for this and the folks working with him was this would be fully interdisciplinary, which really excited me, and that you would have engineers and scientists and others working together in a building in a way that had never been done before. Today we have a number of institutes around the country, around the world, that are interdisciplinary. And I would say that, that IBB was, was really one of the earlier ones. Fifteen years ago, it was not at all common to have a building where you're bringing together individuals from such disparate departments, say, such as chemistry and electrical engineering, to work together on biological problems. This new interdisciplinary model of research quickly got the attention of potential donors. In 1996, thanks to the generosity of Parker H. Petit, the Institute for Bioengineering and Bioscience was provided with a $5 million endowment. In recognition of this gift, the name of the institute was changed to the Parker H. Petit Institute for Bioengineering and Bioscience. Pete Petit, of course, is an alumnus of Georgia Tech and a good friend. Pete's also a very generous man. He's given back uh, extensively to Georgia Tech and to the Petit Institute in particular uh, to help us build this building, uh, to fund the director's chair, and to create the endowment for the institute, which has been absolutely critical. So Pete Petit's uh, generosity really made this institute possible. Some people say that IBB stands for It's Bob's Building, and of course they mean Bob Neerham, not Bob Goldberg. Uh, and in fact, uh, in many ways, uh, the Petit Institute is Bob's building because he had the vision to convince leaders like Wayne Clough to invest in the vision of creating an interdisciplinary space for scientists and engineers to come together. The Petit Institute Building and Plan for Occupation was unique on campus. From the beginning, it was designed to foster interdisciplinary research, bringing together biochemists, bioengineers, and biologists. Space was assigned not on the basis of department affiliation, but on research interests, with every research neighborhood having faculty members and students from multiple disciplines. A large part of the success of the Petit Institute is due to the unique partnership between Georgia Tech and Emory University. As planning and organizing went forward on the new institute, various parties in the city and state began to put their support behind the effort. It really resonated with almost everybody in the city uh, and it ended up cementing the relationship between Emory and Georgia Tech in a way you won't find anywhere, in, I think, in the world where you have a public institution and a private institution with different cultures working together so closely and, and in such a bonded way in such a common purpose and such an area of opportunity that it works. Twenty years after its founding, the Petit Institute continues to grow in size, influence, and entrepreneurial activity. 
From its beginnings as an informal group of like-minded people in borrowed rooms to its current status as a world-renowned research organization with over 170 faculty and 24 million in state-of-the-art facilities, the Institute has become a major influence in the world. It has built and continues to grow a bio-community that is solving real-world problems. I used to know every company in Atlanta that was involved. You know, we were the first. I don't anymore. You can't keep up with them because there's well over 100, maybe well over 200 now. So that says a lot to what has transpired. And the catalyst has been Georgia Tech and Emory University and the, and the Institute. My vision for the future is to completely eliminate the barriers to doing interdisciplinary research and allow different disciplines to work together to answer fundamental questions in biology and chemistry and also to tackle unmet clinical problems with bioengineering technological solutions. It's very gratifying to see some of the very fundamental work that was done early on now being translated into technologies that are impacting people. We have an environment that supports experimentation and it's that learning that um, drives us forward. So where we actually end up may not be exactly where we plan right now, but part of that planning is to create flexibility and agility so that we are able to leverage the learnings that happen along the way. And the results will be spectacular, that I can guarantee.